In this video, I'll be showing you how Machek from Mel Layers rigs these giant soft plastics he makes. From the corkscrew layer holders to the detachable hook rig, and also how he fishes them for big Irish pike. I made it over to Ireland last week for a few days with a very long list of things to do, include test some of the layers that I've been making for a current series of videos. And also while I was there, it was a good chance to test a prototype rod that I've been working on at the rod company where I work. On top of that, I was there to see Machek of Mel Layers and help him film a little promo for his new layers that he's making, these giant shads. But in and amongst all that, we thought it would be great to show you how he rigs these big shads. And I just really wanted the opportunity to kind of sit in on somebody else working in their own workshop and see what goes on. I always find that kind of fascinating. To give you some kind of perspective on the size of this bait, which is really quite hard to tell on camera, I've got a couple of baits I've made previously for other videos. This is really the first soft plastic shad I made. It's a bit battered, but you can see it kind of just stretches a little beyond the gill plate of this layer. And more recently, I made what I thought was quite a large soft plastic shad. And if I stick that on, it's kind of less than half the length. But it's not really to the have a look at the bulk of this layer that you can see just how bloody huge it is. This is 280 grams of rubber and it makes a hell of a slam when it hits the water. So rigging it is much more of a challenge than it is for a lightweight bait, especially if you're going to be throwing these thousands of times a day. But this still has the ability for the hooks to detach but still remain attached to the line. That's really great for unhooking and also saves your bait getting ripped to pieces in the pike's mouth. What holds everything to the bait is a screw buried in the nose. Machek uses 1.2 millimeter stainless steel welding wire, which is corrosion resistance, but does require a few heavy tools to shape and form. The first job is to create a corkscrew to secure the bait when casting and hold the hook carrying part. For this he uses a pair of round nose pliers to form an eye a couple of inches from one end of a short piece of wire. Then he wraps the longer piece of wire around the shorter end three times and gives it a bit of a straight knob. To turn these into corkscrews he uses a clever piece of home engineering which is basically a tube with a slot cut into it. The short end goes into the tube first and the long piece catches in that slot. Then a hook on a wooden arm grabs that wire and with a few turns you've got a spring. This is incredibly quick to use and almost foolproof and if you fancy making one yourself, Matchex made a full video on how to make this gadget and I'll post a link to it. He still needs to stretch the spring out a little, so he places the eye back in his round nose pliers and with a pair of ordinary pliers, pulls them out. And then with some snips, he cuts them back so there's a little bit of wire standing proud of the wraps. To fit them, he pokes the straight part into position on the layer and screws the rest into place, reaching for a pair of pliers to finish the job. For the hook holding part of the rig, he uses another piece of wire and he makes another eye a couple of inches up from one end. But this time he wraps the shorter end around the longer section. Then using a pre-made template, he positions the round nose pliers accurately and then makes another loop before sliding on a swivel. After gripping everything together, it makes another three wraps to secure the eye before straightening everything up and snipping off the excess. Then you can add the hooks with stainless steel split rings to both of the eyes.
After adding another split ring to the swivel, you can connect that to the eye on the corkscrew. Then he puts in a bit of a bend to the main wire of the rig, so it'll match the curve of the lear's belly. And after measuring along, you can spike the end of the wire into the body in the right position. Then you can press one of the hooks from each of the trebles into the soft plastic and the job's done. To most pike anglers, when I say most, to me, this is gonna look like a bit of an extreme bait and an extreme rig, but my check's looking for kind of one meter plus fish, not the jacks that I normally pull out. And to be honest, he has no shortage of takers. My check fishes these baits in a really kind of simple way through the summer months. The lakes that he's fishing are not particularly deep, but the level of summer weed growth reduces the kind of fishable area of the water column. So what he's left with is normally a, a couple of meters above that weed, and the water there is absolutely gin clear. So this big layer really makes a, a target for anything lurking about beneath. Matchek does most of his pike fishing from a bow, which means he doesn't have to put huge distances on the cast, but still with this weight and a decent rod, he does fling it some distance. Despite the weight of this, it actually sinks quite slowly. And normally after about two feet, Matchek starts his retrieve. And the key to that is actually moving the bait as slowly as possible to maintain the kind of height in the water column. And he really lets that big tail do all the talking and occasionally throwing in a pause or just a very random jerk every now and again. The final trick up his sleeve, if nothing grabs on the retrieve, is to do that figure of eight close up to the boat. And it surprises me how many fish will follow it and occasionally it pays off when something grabs hold. Gear wise, he was fishing with an eight foot six prototype from the rod company where I actually work. And we'd only finished this rod before and posted it off and it actually landed on his doorstep as we arrived back from the airport. I don't really want to say too much about that at this stage, only that it could cast that 280 grams quite comfortably. And he managed to do that for a couple of days in some extreme weather without actually putting his back out. This was paired with a heavy duty-ish low profile bait caster reel, which you can imagine you'd need for kind of throwing those baits, retrieving them and also fighting the fish. If you've got your own favorite rig ideas or like to ask some questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.